Hi, Marina. It's Ellen. Um, I want to thank you so much for your kind words. Um, I'm really, really happy that you're finding the essay corrections helpful um, and, you know, possibly motivating. That's uh, wonderful to hear. Um, so great. Let's, uh, let's get into this. Let's take a look at what you have today. Okay, this is the one about employees staying in the same jobs or if they should switch. Let's see what you wrote. Experts throughout both, careful here. Now, basically what happens is, is if you had said countries, then you wouldn't need an article. But since you have world, world does need an article. So it should be experts throughout both uh, the developing and developed world have debated whether employees would gain more benefits and financial stability working for the same country uh, company until their retirement, or whether change of career path could bring greater job satisfaction, professional growth, TH here, and even better salary. This is lovely. Um, just has two little, little problems. We don't say A satisfaction, we say greater job satisfaction, and then this needed that TH. It's a complicated sentence. It's uh, not complicated with like the, the, the negative meaning. I mean that it's, it's a sophisticated, complex sentence. So it's great, um, but uh, it did have those little um, grammatical mistakes. It's a shame really, um, when you do make grammatical mistakes like that, it, 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 how can I say this? It kind of lessens the effect of the sentence. So really you want to aim for accuracy. I think it's great that you tried to, um, you know, attempt a, a sentence like this and it was beautiful. Just have those little two errors, this one here, which is essentially uh, vocabulary and, and this too, okay? So personally, I strongly advocate the idea of changing a career trajectory and this essay will discuss both sides using examples uh, from the UK government and Oxford University to demonstrate points of proof arguments. Okay. I like this. I like this very much. I do have a concern here with the fact that you're going to discuss both sides, but I'd like to actually see how you do this before I, um, get into any detail about why I'm concerned. Okay. So let's just move, uh, move on and see what you wrote. On the one hand, there is ample, powerful evidence that people who stay within one profession and possibly the same company have more advantages compared to employees who jump from one job to another. The central reason behind this is twofold. Firstly, perks and benefits that workers receive increase after every year, comma, leading to overall higher salary package and financial stability. Lovely, 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 lovely. Secondly, professionals committed to the same employers have greater chances to be promoted and move up the ladder in a company. For example, recent empirical research by the UK government demonstrated that 90% of CEOs would select for a promotion an employee with extensive experience, get rid of the AN, in the company rather than hire someone from outside. As a result, it is conclusively clear that being devoted to one job carries numerous benefits that cannot be underestimated. All right, that's beautiful. Maybe I would change one thing grammatically here. Uh, where is it? Okay, here. CEOs would select an employee with, expensive, with extensive experience in the company for a promotion. Basically, you're never supposed to, um, you're never supposed to split your, your verb and your object, okay? You've got this uh, prepositional phrase here for a promotion. So this should not come between the verb select and the object employee. So you should have put this at the end of the clause, which means it should read like this. Would select an employee with extensive experience in the company for a promotion. That's where it should go, rather than hire someone from outside, okay? And of course, no and here. But this is a lovely paragraph. I liked it. I still have a concern, though, about this, so we'll get there, okay? All right. On the other hand, although there is a case for earning a golden parachute, getting promotion, and even securing a bank account for the rest of one's apostrophe S here at life, the multifold advantages of changing jobs with an S here should not be denied. This is largely because career transition allows people to master new skills and take on responsibility in a different sector, which is absolutely essential for professional development and maintaining a positive work attitude. New technologies in education and training have spread widely over the last few decades, comma, 
allowing employees to gain diverse skill sets and enhance their professional capabilities to prepare them for a rapidly growing mm, for the rapidly growing business market. For example, an extensive study by Oxford University illustrated that people change their job every five years. No, that people who change their jobs every five years are less likely to experience professional frustration and burnout than those who hold a position in the same professional niche. Consistent with this line of thinking is that many fresh college graduates, having worked for one company for a couple of years, realize that a profession they have chosen does not satisfy their career ambitions and feel content and happy after embarking on a new job. Lovely, lovely, lovely. To conclude from the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that although keeping the same job for the rest of the life has many advantages, exploring different career paths carries greater benefits because it undoubtedly increases chances to land a dream job and succeed in life. It is predicted that this approach will continue to flourish in the future, especially among younger generation among the younger generation. All right, great. This is really, really nice. Um, a lot of your language is nice, a lot of your grammar, a lot of your vocabulary. It flowed really, really well. Were there some mistakes with grammar? Um, yeah, there were, but it wasn't anything that I found particularly problematic. The overall uh, impression of this is very strong. It's very good. Now, uh, now I've, that I finished it, I can go back to this. Um, what did I want to tell you about this? So the essay asks you to what extent do you agree or disagree? So they are asking you only for your opinion. Okay. And here you tell us, I strongly advocate the one side. All right. So that's also fine. So then what we don't understand is number one, why you discuss both sides. And number two, why you're talking about this you see all of that doesn't make sense it doesn't it doesn't fit together they didn't ask you to talk about both sides okay you've already told us which side you strongly advocate and so we have no understanding as to why you've decided to talk about the opposite side of the argument okay now that being said, I actually think it's a great idea to talk about both sides of the argument, even in an essay where they ask you to what extent do you agree or disagree. However, you need to frame it appropriately. And it all goes back to how you express your position in your introduction. So what do I mean? Rather than saying, personally, I strongly advocate the idea of changing career trajectory, you should have talked about the fact that you can also see benefits to the other side. So you're going to need to use a somewhat different structure to express your position. So let's try something like, personally, um, although there are many factors favoring staying in the same job throughout one's career, on the whole, I advocate the idea of changing career trajectory. Okay, so this way you are essentially giving us a roadmap for this essay. You're explaining to us, you're justifying why you have this paragraph about the benefits of staying in the same career. And it all makes sense. It's all, it, it's all far more cohesive this way and coherent. It makes sense to us the way you've organized your paragraphs, the way you're talking about this. Okay, so while uh, just to recap while i i agree with your decision to talk about this and i think you should um you do need to address it appropriately in your introduction in fact what i saw is that you uh you did address it in your conclusion so look what you did here you said although keeping the same job has many advantages exploring different career paths carries greater benefits so you did it absolutely right in your conclusion but what you needed to do was the same sort of idea in your introduction, okay? All right. On the whole, though, I thought this was a really, really nice essay. Let's just, um, you know, try to try to fix that little issue. Um, I mean, little issue. It's it's a little issue, and it's not a little issue. So 
Um, I mean, it's a kind of thing that could could affect your band score, um, either in in task achievement or in coherence and cohesion. So, you know, make sure that all of this is is appropriately glued together and that it, it's all very logically organized and, and so forth. Okay. All right, let's move on to your task one, which is the English and Homestay letter. Great. Dear Mrs. J Ms. Johns, I hope this letter finds you well. I'm writing to inform you about my one month stay with your family as a part of an English and Homestay program. Okay, let us start with an introduction. My name is Paula and I live in Portugal. This is my last year in a medical college and I've been given this great opportunity to spend one month in the UK and improve my English. Because of my future profession, no, because my future profession requires full dedication and studying hard, I haven't been traveling a lot, and this will be my first time in the UK. I'm wan I'm wandering about the typical weather in your region in August, so I can pack proper cloths and don't have to go shopping in my first week of stay. Also, should I bring enough cash on me, or credit cards are widely acceptable. Being naturally very curious and easygoing person, I'd like to explore as many tourist attractions as I can, and it'd be very useful if you could advise me on some good websites and act with accurate information so I can read about places of interest in advance. I'm very excited to meet you and your family members and can't wait. My flight arrives on 2nd of August at 1.30, and I hope baggage claim and other formalities won't take long. I plan to reach your house by a taxi that would probably take around an hour. See you soon. Best wishes. Okay. Um, I wanted to read the whole thing through uh, just to get a sense of its strengths and its weaknesses. It's really very natural. So I thought you wrote it very, very nicely. Really, you did a very good job. Uh, there are some mistakes. We will talk about those mistakes. But I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about the register. So in case you don't know what we mean by register, it means um, how formal or how informal this is. Uh, you wrote it, I would say, kind of semi-formal, okay? Um, and I am actually going to go ahead and tell you that I think this letter is supposed to be formal. Um, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, well, Ellen, I'm going to stay with them for a month. Like, how can I be formal? Yeah, and I understand that. But the fact is, is you don't know them yet. So when we're talking about the difference between formal or semi-formal, um, the distinction is basically if it's a person you don't know or a person you haven't met or, uh, yeah, basically if it's a person you haven't met, you're going to speak formally. If it's someone you have met several times, if it's a teacher, if it's a manager, um, or someone that you have some sort of a relationship already with, then go ahead and be semi-formal. But since you haven't met these people and this is your first communication with them, it's really a good idea to be formal here, okay? So what does that mean in terms of what you wrote? Well, for one thing, it means none of these contractions. So you've got I've, you've got I'm, you've got I'm, haven't, id, all right? So all of these would be absolutely appropriate in a semi-formal or in an informal letter, but not here, okay? So that's one thing that I want to talk to you about. Um, the formality of this. Now I want to talk to you about some of the other things, other some of the grammar issues. So let me just look through it and I'll go through some of the specifics. So English and Homestay is a title, so it's not an English and Homestay program, it's the English and Homestay program. That's why it's in quotes, because it's a title. This was all very nice. Now here, you said I'm, wa I'm, I'm uh, wandering. That's the wrong word. This is a word, okay, but it's not the right word. So what you wanted was wondering with an O, not an A. And it's important to be careful about this kind of mistake because, as I said, wandering is its own word. So um, when you make a mistake and the word you write is actually another word, it can actually change the entire meaning of the sentence. So you, you have to be careful with that, okay? Um, there was some strange grammar here. Uh, let's see. I'm wondering about the typical weather in your region in August, so I can pack proper clothes. There should have been an E here. And do not have to go shopping in my first week of stay. All right, that was okay. And now here you had a grammatical problem. Let's take a look at it. Also, should I bring enough cash on me or are credit cards 
widely acceptable. Okay. Um, and this would be good if you can advise me on some good websites with accurate information. So I can be, okay, that's perfect. Um, so this sentence, which was lovely, it was really good, but it was also really informal. So um, just to give you an idea of how you could have rephrased it in a more formal way, just something like, um, I am, uh, you could have said I'm very excited. That's not a big deal. I am very excited to meet you uh, and your family members uh, and, am, and am anxiously looking forward to my visit. Okay, that would have been fine. Uh, I plan to reach your house by taxi. That would probably take an, around an hour. Okay, fine. So that's no big deal. Um, also, the best wishes is a little too informal. You should have probably just said something like yours sincerely. So be more cautious, be a little more formal. And that's pretty much it. Um, so the level of language, all of that is really, really, really good. I'm really very happy with these essays. Um, but, you know, you have a couple of, of, of pointers now so that you can take and um, incorporate into your writing so that you can continue to improve, okay? Great job, keep writing, correct these, and uh, let's see more work from you, good luck.